Richard Colbeck, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Chris. Look, we've known since at least February that the real focus of coronavirus deaths overseas was elderly people, and in particular, people in aged care homes. Why were we so badly underprepared in this country? Look, I don't think we necessarily were underprepared, but and we've done a pretty good job of keeping it out for a period of time. And the current circumstance is very much a function of community transmission. The fact that we were able to limit community transmission, which meant that workers particularly weren't picking up the virus, then weren't going to work uh, as asymptomatic uh, carriers of the virus, uh, has been one of our successes. The, the fact that we have the ex extensive level of community transmission in Victoria at the moment is having, having an impact across the community, and we're seeing that uh, sadly with the mortality rates that we're having in aged care, but you've got well over a 1,000 health workers in Victoria's hospital system that have got the virus, and we're also seeing it cropping up in other workplaces, which is why the uh, impact of the Level 4 restrictions we've seen applied this week. So uh, it is very much a function of um, the community transmission, and that's why it's so important that we get that under control. But we knew from at least February, as I say, February at the latest, that elderly uh, people, that aged care centres were going to be key key factors here. They were particularly vulnerable. We had the New March health, health, New March House disaster in Sydney, where dozens of people lost their lives. There was no reason not to be fully prepared for this in Victoria. Yet, of the 162 deaths so far in Victoria, 137 have occurred in aged care centres. Well, that's because of the impact of uh, the virus on older people who have other comorbidities. So that's uh, the, 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 the mortality rate in older Australians is so much higher. We're but but my, point is, my point is we've known that for so long. We've known that those aged care facilities needed to be protected, yet we've failed to protect them. Obviously, the hygiene requirements weren't up to scratch. We've had cases in Victoria where workers were going from centre to centre. Uh, now you're trying to catch up with this response team. We've failed to keep the disease at bay in our aged care centres in Victoria. We need to be certain that we're getting on top of that and that we're doing better around the country, surely? Well, the only way that we're going to keep COVID-19 out of aged care facilities is to, have, uh, get, to get on top of community transmission. There is no country in the world who has had large levels of community transmission uh, and not had uh, outbreaks within aged care. It's, it's a function of the disease. What's happening is that people are picking up the virus in the community. They're going to work before they understand that they have it. They're asymptomatic. Uh, and, unfortunately, uh, it's being spread into the facilities. But we've been working with the sector since January. We put out our first piece of advice to the aged care sector in January. We put out further pieces of advice in February, the CDNA has ma now made three iterations of its advice uh, to aged care that have all been provided to the sector. The AHPPC, on a number of occasions, has reviewed the advice that it's provided to the aged care sector, and it's doing more work now. And I've been talking to the uh, acting CMO over the last week about what additional resources, what additional factors we could use, uh, and how we apply uh, learnings from previous outbreaks. We continue to look at how the uh, virus acts, how it evolves, and we apply those learnings to continue to work. But at the, uh, at the bottom line to all of this is that while you have community transmission of COVID-19, uh, everyone in the community is at risk. Nobody is immune from the virus. There is no vaccine. So while there's community transmission, uh, we will have and continue to have risks in aged care. We know how difficult it is, as you say, if the virus is in the community, for it to come into aged care facilities through workers, through visitors, it's going to be extremely difficult. But obviously not enough was done because you're putting in a whole range of remedial actions in Victoria. Well, as, as I said, as we've looked at the circumstances that have gone before, we've continued to update the advice to the sector. That's why three weeks ago the HPPC said that uh, all aged care workers in Metro Melbourne should wear masks. We uh, applied that advice that day. But my, my, point, my point, this is three weeks ago when we're talking about a problem that's been months in the making. Why weren't these steps in place back in February or March? Well, as I said, Chris, uh, 
we're taking the advice of the health professionals and the health officials through the HPBC. I think that's the appropriate course of action. That's what we should do. And we continue to ask uh, those authorities, those that have the specialist capacity and information with respect to how the disease operates, the question of is there anything more that we can do? I think that's our responsibility and we continue to do that all the time. Uh, I read the reports that come in on the various circumstances. Uh, that leads me to ask questions and I know that others in the health team has uh, been doing exactly the same thing. And as we ask those questions, as we come to uh, new, new sources of information, uh, we appropriately apply that. And I think that's that's what we uh, can and should do, and that's what we will continue to do. Gee, it's, it's, it's very difficult, and I know uh, greater minds uh, than mine are putting uh, their efforts to working out ways to deal with this, but would you agree that effectively, in large part in this country, what we're dealing here, what we're dealing with here is an aged care problem, an aged care threat, rather than a broader community threat. I think nationally, out of 247 deaths, 168 have occurred in aged care centres. So if we can find ways to keep them completely isolated from this virus, the impact on our society is going to be drastically reduced. So many lives are going to be saved. Well, in, to put it in context, there's over 2,700 aged care facilities in this country. Less than 6% of them have had a, an outbreak of COVID-19 and uh, we're just doing some work to track at the moment uh, the incidence of community spread and the relationship between outbreaks. So that information will be available soon. So to put it in context, I think the aged care sector largely has done well. Uh, the, the staff in the sector, I have to say, uh, have done absolutely brilliantly because they're, they're on the front line of this and doing an absolutely sensational job under huge stress uh, and at some times... Uh, you know, they're, they're concerned about going to work and catching the virus and taking it home. Uh, so so uh, my hat goes off to those people on the front line. But in context, I think we've done pretty well as a nation. We did exceptionally well to suppress the community spread of the virus in the first round. Uh, we've got some issues at the moment in Victoria and all of our resources are going towards that. I know that the Commonwealth is assisting significantly. Other states are assisting Victoria with... Uh, to get on top of the virus. But if we're going to stop it in any context, in any workplace, uh, we have to get on top of community spread. In fact, I've even had in the last uh, few days and over the weekend notifications of some uh, people who've come out of aged care facilities to go to hospital and come back with the virus. So it's not just limited to uh, residential aged care facilities. It's, it's in the community and it's in the workforce. Uh, and that's our risk and that's what we really need to get on top of. Richard Colbeck, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Chris.